you know, it is such an honor to be here with you. Uh, the first time Pat and I came here in October, our hearts were just overjoyed, and we felt like we were just family. And I love when you go to the house of the Lord and you just feel like you're home. And so I just want to thank all of you for welcoming us, for being here with us, for inviting us, for inviting our team in, and for just opening your hearts. But I really feel today is a day of partnering with you in a different way, that God called us together for a reason. And we've felt that for a long time, and we've known that. And the things that have been said all morning long, I've just been, well, check, that's done, check, that's done. I don't have to say this, and I don't don't have to say that but you know it's because God brought us together for a purpose because I do believe the same as you do we do believe that God is coming back for a people for a bride that's perfected herself for a bride that decided to get up and say I can do this and he's not coming back for a wimpy church that doesn't know what to do and is crying all the time and oh God help me but he's coming back for a strong church he's coming back for a people that believe the word of the Lord my church, my church, I love my church because we went through a, a time, a short time of 25 plus years of wilderness where we were left to ourselves and there was no family. So family becomes very important, right? And looking for people that you share the same heart with and that believe that Jesus came to make us overcomers and not just a helpless wreck. Okay, the church is an army. The church is a place where people get strength. The church is a place where people want to come. The church is a place where life happens. So when I came in here on a Friday night, what I felt was expectancy. Your expectancy was so great. And you're welcome to sit down if you want. <laughs> you don't have to stand. But what overwhelmed me was that, that same drive to just be in the presence of God. To have everything that he wants for you. You know, when I look at Lace, <laughs> here she is expecting. What are you expecting? Yes. You know that's a baby, don't you? You know what's inside, but you can't see it. But you know it's a good thing. You know it's beautiful. You know that God's got great things ahead, not only for you, but for that little one. When I came in here the other day, the expectancy. Sometimes we don't know exactly what it looks like. Sometimes it's, hit, it's, well, it's hidden, right? God forms us in the womb where people can't see. But I'm here to say that the birthing day has come. Amen. Because you can only be expecting so long. Yeah. Right? And may I note, you can only be expecting if you've been in a place of intimacy. It's who or what you're intimate with is what you can expect. And sometimes when people aren't expecting good things, it's because of who or what they've been with. But when you come into the house of God, when you come into the presence of the Lord, when you come into that place where you're changed, where everything within you is under him. That place of expectancy. You know, we find in Luke, it says in Jerusalem, there was a man, Simeon by name, a good man who lived in the prayerful expectancy of help for Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. Romans 5 says an alert expectancy such as this. We're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We cannot round up enough containers to hold everything that God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. That was the other thing I noticed when I came in here. You had your logos up about the encounter conference. But I love the word positioned for outpouring. 
You guys have been positioning yourselves for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And you've watched the Holy Spirit move here. We watched your video from last week. We saw the Holy Spirit moving here. I'm sure he moves in service after service after service. And like they said, sometimes you can get so used to it. You know, I am old enough to know the... I hate to say it, but you know, I'm old enough to know the summer of love and what it did to America. I'm old enough to watch the Jesus people movement rise up out of Southern California. I'm old enough to have been to Catherine Kuhlman's meetings and actually get prayed for by her. I'm old enough to have seen a lot of great things that God's done. And just like Pastor Derek said and Pastor Troy, we have to rehearse the things that God has done, the miracles that we've seen. I've actually seen two people raised from the dead. I've actually seen people healed. I've actually seen women who could not have children for years after years after years bring birth. I have seen the miracles of God in my lifetime. I've watched lives that came in that were so messed up that you would cannot even believe it. it. Because of it, I was a young child. I was completely influenced. I would never touch a drop of alcohol or would I take a drug in my life because of what I saw happen to their hearts, to their minds. I know what God can do. I see miracle after miracle after miracle. And yet sometimes they become so familiar that we just get used to them. But I'm saying do never, just like Pastor Derek just said, don't ever, ever, ever get used to what you see. What is ordinary to you is extraordinary to the world because we are supernatural. We are made of spirit. We are in tune with God. God does speak to us. It is that time when he says, how's Susie? You know, what are you thinking? How do you think she's been? You haven't seen her for a while. That's God saying, call Susie. Okay, you guys, you are hearing from God. You've heard from God, and you're going to hear more. Some of this stuff is simple, but when the word of the Lord comes, the voice of the Lord comes, it comes to bring healing. It comes to bring deliverance. It comes to do all sorts of amazing things because the voice of God creates, and that's why he needs you to be his voice. I spent a lifetime being afraid to be the voice. I didn't want to say it wrong. I, d I really don't like attention. It's not my thing. But when I realized it really wasn't about me, it was about him needing me to be his voice, that it no longer became an option. It wasn't that I was competing with people, because there's a lot of amazing speakers out there I hate when people get up and preach and they never look at their notes. I'm like, God, why? That's just not right. But like Pastor Troy said, when you have the love of God compelling you, you complete. Compete and complete has only one letter difference. I say the L stands for love. A husband and a wife do not need to compete. They need to complete. When the body of Christ does not compete, we complete. Like Pastor Susan and Pastor Derek just said, they're going to know you by their love. So God, we are here this weekend to encourage you to walk in all that you've been given, all that you've been poured into, and take that love of God that is compelling you. You know, yeah, he found us, some of us as a wreck. Me, I was really lucky. I was a baby. I was rescued. I was rescued out of an alcoholic family. Five kids. God rescued me. I wasn't put there because of my own problem. And why God rescued me and not somebody else, I don't know. But me, I'll always be grateful. I can't answer the question why. I don't know. But I can give my life to the one that rescued me. The other thing that was been on my heart, I'm just one of these really... Uh, one of these people that watches everything, and I watch what's going on in our world, and I even watch the news, even though I go crazy. 
but I want to know what's happening. But I've also noticed over these last several years, there's been so many more natural disasters, so many things that just keep happening. And just in this last year, or less than a year, here in California, we've seen some crazy things. We experienced just a few months, or just a few weeks ago, actually, an atmospheric river, is what they called it. An atmospheric river that brought in the rain. For us, it brought in the snow. Praise the Lord. We live at 5,000 feet. We had over four feet of snow on the ground, but they had 10, 12, 14 feet in the high country because of an atmospheric river that came through. And then there's been the blowing of winds and hurricanes across America and things happening. And then we were just in Alaska last week, and the first night we were there at 4.30 in the morning, there was an explosion that went off of a volcano over 8,000 miles away that was heard by many, even where I was. And sometimes I'm just kind of going, hmm, is this all coincidental? I mean, because Romans tells us that the whole earth is groaning and travailing. But what are they crying out for? They're cr the earth is crying out for the manifested sons and daughters of God. The people who are going to rise up the people that are going to go forth. And so today I was looking up about volcanoes because, you know, it just kind of intrigued me how that happened. And it says that volcanoes erupt because of three predominant factors. Because of the buoyancy of the magma, the liquid stuff, right? And then the pressure from within and in the gases. And then the injection of a new batch of magma into an already filled magma chamber. And it'll explode. Another way an eruption happens is when the water gets underneath the magma. And it interacts with it, and it creates steam, and it blows. And I began to see that the Lord was saying that he was moving in the earth today. And you all know in the Bible, waters and people get the same picture. And I thought about the water underneath the magma, the hot, the boiling things that are going on in the spirit of God. And the pressure from the earth pushing on it. The pressure of the things going on in our earth today. But I believe there's going to be a blow of the Spirit that's going to go across this land. It's going to go across California. Because, see, I am with you, Pastor Susan. I believe that God has got a plan for California and the United States of America. And I don't really care what I see or what I hear. I know what God says. But I know that God is causing his people to begin to flow. The river from heaven that flows from the throne of grace is flowing into the earth. And he has got a plan for America. And it's going to explode. And so we're here with you. We're partnering with you. We're partnering with other churches here in Southern California because a move of God began here once before. And God has put the word out to multiple prophets to redig those wells, to cause them to spring up. When you redig a well, you pull the junk out. It's time to pull the junk out in California. It's time to stand. It's time to say, we will take you back and we are well able. And so you can't, it, it makes me so excited when I get around people that believe like you do and that have that same vision and believe what God has. And so God placed us in the mountains. And the other thing that happened this last year, can you put that picture up for me? There's something, in, we're right above Yosemite, and there is a thing. This is a phenomena that happens, can happen in Yosemite. That is not actual the firefall where they push fire off. 
This is a natural thing that happens. When the atmosphere is perfect, the water in the air, the content in the air is perfect, and the setting of the sun and all that, it creates this natural, what looks like a firefall. This normally happens, every, it can happen in February. It can only happen at a certain time of year when the sun is at a certain level. Um, it has to have water in the fall, though, to happen. So it can happen in February and in October. But it usually only happens once a year. But in 2021, that picture happened. Firefall. Because the atmosphere was perfect. Because God sent a rain in October. An unexpected rain. And I just said, that's a picture. That was a phenomena. It was a miracle. It was something that was unusual and rare, something that you don't see all the time. And I believe God is speaking through the things in the earth that he's doing that no man can take credit for or get blamed for, <laughs> better yet. And I'm here today just to say everything your pastors are teaching you is the real deal. And that there's other crazy people like you out there that believe the same thing. And we believe that Jesus is coming back. And we believe that there will be a people who will never taste death. A people that will be alive and remaining. A people who will come and be with Jesus. And that he's coming back to earth to rule and reign for a thousand years. Yes. And I'm with you, Derek. I want to be one of them. I want to be one of them because I believe that that's going to be. That's what we have to look forward to. That is the good news of the kingdom of God. God has got us in our church this year focusing on the good news because of a world full of bad news. But we're out there saying there is good news. There is hope. There is life. There are things that God wants to do in our lives. And there is, he wants to bring life and life more abundantly. And yes, we have an enemy who wants to rob, kill, and destroy. We have an enemy who wants to abort our destiny. But we are greater and the spirit of God is greater and we are going to walk into all that we have and we will be that people so like I said I am just so privileged to, to know you guys to feel our hearts connect like this there are so many other things that you know God is doing in the earth but I just want to end this by declaring over this house the things that God's told you the things that you kept in your heart, the things that you committed to God and waited and waited and waited with expectancy, they are coming to pass. The things that are there now, the places that you see, the people that you want to rescue, it's time. The time of birthing has come. The time of birthing has come. And this house is going to see everything that God has promised you, everything that you carry. He sees the honor that you carry for him. He sees the honor that you carry for one another, for this house, for this community. And he is going to honor you in the same way that you have honored him. And he is going to do every word that he has promised you. There will be nothing left out. Nothing There are such great days ahead, such great things, and you will raise children that will be those sons and those daughters that are going to move across this whole earth. And it's right, it's not going to stop here. It's not over here. It's not over here. You're going to move back from the west to the east across these states. And you're going to see the move of God. God is doing great things. And church, like they said, you can't, they can't do it by themselves. Pastor Bob preached a message this last year 
It was called I Am Church. I Am Church. If you have a complaint with church, here's the complaint department. <laughs> they can't do it without you because you are them and they are you. Your DNA is connected. So we are here. Miwok sends our blessings. Like I said, it's so wonderful to meet other churches that are like-minded. So we say, God bless you. We say, take the word of the Lord. We say, be the voice of God in this hour. Because God came here to activate you. For those of you who look at the pastors and all those people who just prophesy like nothing. You know, oh, it's just no big deal. He wants to use you. He might want to use you in the grocery store. He might want to use you at your job. He might want you to be the one to just come up to someone and say, you know, there's a call on your life. We had an opportunity from a uh, difficult situation the other day that came where we were put in connection with a young man. And I began to realize there was more to the situation than what was there. And I began to speak over him, and tears just began to run down his face. This kid doesn't know me. I don't know him. But tears began to run down his face. And I realized God made that moment to literally save that kid's life. And how many times can we just walk past that moment, right? Just think it's no big deal. But God's beginning to change that mindset, beginning to open our eyes. So take what you have been taught here in this house and the things that Pastor Bob brought to you and the things that God began to show you and take it out into that world. Because that is a mission field right outside those doors. Right outside those doors. You don't have to go to Africa. You don't have to go to Haiti. You don't have to go anywhere to have a mission field. Those things are great too. But sometimes we get so worried about those that we forget what's right in front of us. LA needs a lot of help. California needs good teachers. California needs good politicians. California needs good judges. California needs good parents. California needs good doctors. Why can't that be you? We always disqualify ourselves. But the Spirit of the Lord says to you, I'm calling you. So whatever the calling of God is on your life, rise up. Rise up. You guys are so fortunate to have each other. So fortunate to have pastors like this. We've fallen in love with the Marshalls. They come and visit us. We go to Pinecrest Lake together. <laughs> Poor Pastor Derek, he kind of got by himself and he ended up in really bad places in Tuolumne County. He didn't check with the foodies of the county. And <laughs> we won't let him be by himself again. <laughs> but we love your families. You guys are just awesome. And so thank you. Thank you so much for the honor to be here. An honor to be a part of you, to partner with you. And we'll look forward to coming again. You're all welcome to Miwok anytime. So God bless you. Come on, let's get a lot of big hands. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know, many of you don't know, but she grew up a PK. Their church has been going for 50 years in a move of God. And, uh, you know, I went up there and you just see what God has done in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we thought we were laughing the other day. Someone said they came from a small town. Like, this is a small town. They have one traffic light. You literally close your eyes and you drove through the town. But God built a beautiful church there. They have a lodge and you need to get away and seek the Lord, go there. And great, great first class coffee shop, solar panels, self-supportive. They 
Lord gave them a piece of land. They have an orchard. And I said, when there's tribulation, I already talked to Pastor Pat. We booked the City Harvest Church few acres, all right? So we're, we're gonna go to the mountain and we'll just have a homecoming. But, but look what the, when I first was just blown away, I, what's, what's a Miwok, you know? I think of Star Wars, you know, the Wookiees. But went up there, but this church was started by her mom, a woman in that day when women weren't, and I said this the other night in the conference, women were not accepted to be leaders. You couldn't be a leader because you're a woman. You can't have authority over man and all that nonsense. And she was okay with that. But on her deathbed, she had an encounter with God and God said, you either come into the call of God or I'm taking you home. She said, I think I'll stick around a little while longer. And got in the call of God, but went up and move of God up on this mountain bringing people into the prophetic and devil came in and you know she shared maybe one time they can share the story and they were isolated and, and just there but people came together drove up and were there in a move of God and, and that's that's wonderful but I want to commend you and her husband Pastor Pat because most moves of God they end with one generation but they've kept it they were faithful to the vision. The baton was passed, and they've been so faithful. So we commend you, Pastor Celine. Pastor Pat's not here. I know he's watching. For keeping it. For keeping it. You know, and we were there recently, and Bishop Bill Hammond was there. I'm like, they got Bishop Bill Hammond? I mean, he doesn't go a lot of places. He's up there. And he went, and he said, this is going to be, there's God's opening a portal on this mountain. This is going to be one of the hubs in California. And I thought, wow, that was a commendation from the Lord because we've been faithful in it, amen? It's not about the numbers. It's not about the most polished people, but it's about people who are activated in God and, and, and willing to, to keep the move of God, amen? And so, you know, as we're encouraged today, we're not just here flattering. We didn't pay them to say that. They came here with no expectation. She wasn't even supposed to preach. And I just, we were saying, who's gonna preach on Sunday? And I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't feel it. I'm like, I, I don't really have a word and let's just see what happens. Maybe Pastor Troy's got another word or Anwin or, you know, Pastor Bob or whoever. And she was here and I just felt, I said, can you preach? Can I preach? And then later Pastor Cindy said, you, you got her to preach? What did you? And I said, yeah. You know, but I feel today we, we've, we received that impossible. Isn't it, it's an endorsement from someone who has walked the walk, been in a move of God, paid the price, and, you know, the, the thing I'll say about her, you know, everyone loves her, and Susan mentioned a little bit, but what's Bob say? If you want to be the greatest, you got to be a servant. And when I come there, I mean, when I'm there, she's bringing me drinks, serving all the men of God, and all this. Like, Who's this? She's the lead pastor. But no matter how far you go, no matter what God does, we're still a servant. I went up there with the boys and took Samuel and Ethan. We just went for three days to ski call. They had a room and quickly went up there. And I drive up and Pastor Pat, her husband, is shoveling snow. And I was shocked. At one point, I'm like, he's a, like, I said, don't you have anyone else that can help you, Pastor? Like, hey, let me help you. I'll take, you know, he's, I'm younger than him. You know? And he said, oh, I love doing this. And it spoke to me. No matter what the job is, love, because this is the house of God. This is God's lodge. This is what God has done. We need to keep that. God's going to do amazing things in this place, church. But never forget the days of small beginning. Never forget the family. We'll look back, and I'm sure there were a time when they were in a, a shop house <laughs> where they started, and they, that was the good, that was the move of God. That was, because when people come in, and they come in with all their mess and their brokenness and all of that stuff, we want them to come in. We're not trying to build a close, exclusive club. The, the church is not about elitists. But let's not lose our DNA not lose our fervency, not lose our passion, that it's contagious as we keep that strong as God adds the multitudes and we see people come in. What do they come in? They see our generosity and they become generous. They see our love for one another and they start wanting to love each other. They see how we serve and they want to sign up and serve. They, they see the move of God in the children and they're, they're moved to, that what, it becomes contagious. How do you start a fire? You become a fire starter. It's not just for us and the leaders and the, you guys are fire started. Hold each other accountable. When the, when the unity is under attack and people are, rah, rah, you can tell when there's disunity. It has that eh, 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 to it. Eh, 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 eh. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe you need to go pray. Don't be, don't be speaking that. Don't be, be gatekeepers. And let's protect what God is going to do. I believe harvest is coming. I believe we're going to see it. We're going to engage our, our, our city. We're going to do all of that. 
but let's keep the purity of what God's done. I, you know, I always get the word, Pastor Bob said it too. You know, he said, despise not the days of false small beginnings. I'm like, really, Jesus? Like, can we just get a different word? You know, first word we had, I was down in San Diego, the pastor said, God's gonna build an amazing word. He said, but it's gonna start small and it's gonna be slow. I said, get behind me, you know. We don't like those kind of words. But he said, because it has to be strong. It has to be strong. And so as we prepare the way, and I love you know, the slogan we were trying to, what was the slogan? It's what positioning ourselves for outpouring. You gotta be positioned in the word, in prayer, in your spirit, so that God can do it. And we are positioned for the move of God. I believe that, but let's stay positioned. Let's not get into the success. I believe millions of dollars are gonna flow through our ministry. But I never forget when we're led of the Lord and we're believing in faith to get through the month. I never forget that that's not, this is not ours, it's precious. It, it belongs to God. People mess up, why? Because they touch the gold. They touch God's glory. Or they touch the girls or the guys that they shouldn't be touching. Come on. And, and it just, we've got to keep those things right. Keep those things submitted and allow God in the midst of small beginnings. As God astounds us, we still keep the same heart. David took off all his kingly robes. He danced before the Lord. He said, look, the God who brought me from the pasture, who remembered me when I was despised, sent away. Most people believe he's a bastard son, sent away. Wasn't even in the lineup when Samuel was looking for the sons. But he said, I will dance before the Lord. I'm gonna keep that spirit of praise. When he sinned and he messed up, he said, God, whatever you do, take the palace away, but don't take your Holy Spirit, your presence from me. Come on, let that be our heart, amen. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Father, we just thank you, God, for what you're doing. We thank you for outpouring this week, God, and it's gonna continue to pour out. It's gonna continue to grow out that, God, we will take what we've had. We're so grateful, God, for the men of God, the women of God, relationships you bring. We're so grateful for what you're doing in our lives, God. We don't despise it, God. We don't despise our birthright. We don't despise your presence. We don't despise the blood blessing but God we come before you God and we say Lord have your way in our life God we say if you can use anything Lord use us in our brokenness God in the past that we've come from broken families God for us and, and those of us we feel we're not so educated God you use us those of us we feel we don't have might God we don't have strength God but God we declare your grace is upon us that you would receive the glory that you would receive the honor that you would come and do something in a small place Lord that's not so known in this territory God because you desire to be lifted up you desire to be glorified so God we declare even as you spoke this morning we say God we're ready for more we say let your fire fall let your wind come blow Lord have your way in our lives in the name of Jesus we worship you God we worship you Jesus fire fall
prophet Bob, can you just come and just pray the closing prayer, release if the Lord's given anything over us as we end off this weekend. sacrifice bring to me an offering that only you can bring that only you can bring bring to me an offering bring to me a sacrifice see if I will not increase it in and through your life says God Bring to me an offering from a heart that's pure, from a heart that desires me more than life itself. And God says, bring to me an offering. Bring to me an offering. I will accept it, says your king. I will accept you, says the Lord. So I sing over you. I sing deliverance and healing, says God. As you bring to me an offering, I bring to you my life. Shurama Sanda Cheto. I sing over my people and you brought to me an offering acceptable in my sight son an offering I never despise because you bring your heart had nothing else oh you bring to me an offering so I bring my anointing to you the things you touch the things you see God says I will bring out of you resurrection power will be in these hands the power to raise the dead only continue to bring to me an offering and see what I do in and through you, says the King. Bring to me an offering. Bring to me an offering. your offering's been pure to me without guile and few have understood it says your God but I want to sing over you I want to sing over you with my anointing says King because all the days of your life I will not leave you 
And when people see things and say it's impossible, you'll say, Papa, with you, I come to you and I bring you an offering of my life. I pour it out, says God. And this has not been lost on me, says the Lord. bring to you an offering, says the Lord. Healing and strength in this house, over the shepherds of this house. A peace that brings so, so much with it. Father, I pray your anointing upon this house so God would flow like a river through it. People would be swept into it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bow ourselves before you, King. There's none like you, oh God. We, in fact, cast off our crowns, oh God, at your throne. And we say, worthy, worthy, worthy are you. Father, where will we go? you, there's nobody like you. Our whole life is wrapped up in you, God. So we honor you, Father in heaven. We honor you, oh God, with our lives. We give you glory. We know that no flesh will glory in your presence, so we, oh God, we bow before you, King. You get the glory, God. All the healings and the deliverance, how you saved our lives, you get the glory.
my fire is falling over you and my wind oh it's blowing over you I've been waiting for you I've been waiting for you receive my fire receive this breath I'm right here I've been waiting and waiting for you to draw near receive my fire receive my breath I'm right here I'm right here I am waiting for Come to the altar. Come and just respond. Come and surrender to him and just say, God, I'm giving you all of me. Take all of me, God. Come on, final surrender, total surrender. So his fire would fall, that his wind would blow. We're going to stop playing games. We're going to stop being religious. We want all of you, God. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory, God. We don't want to play the game. We don't have a form but not experience the power and go through the motions. Let your fire fall, your wind come blow. God, you're waiting on us. You're looking for those that you can show himself strong. We come before you, God, we surrender. We lay it all down. We place our lives on the altar, a living sacrifice. Holy, set apart, not perfect, but set apart for your glory. Let your fire fall, blow in our lives, come and turn things around. Come and begin to shift things around. Shut up, I just hear the Lord say, you can trust me. You can trust me. Try me now in this, says the Lord. If you will not lay your life down, and I will not use it for my glory, if I'm not open up the windows of heaven and pour the blessing upon your business, upon your family, you can trust me, says God. I'm a good, good father it's who i am father we put our trust in you we put our trust in you shout out of a hole let your fire fall fire fall Oh, Ray. 
you know, in the military, and I was, we were worshiping, I just felt the Lord stir this in my heart. They have a saying, no man left behind. And that's the heart of God. He doesn't want anyone to let behind. He wants everyone to be desired. And that's what we need to be do. Let's not be running so far that we miss out on those that are straggling a bit behind. That we say, God, no one left behind, God. That our church, we're only as strong as our weakest member. That every part of the body we're supplying and all of us go through things in our life and God's sifting us that we wouldn't be a voice of condemnation. We wouldn't be a voice to misrepresent God. But we'd be a voice of encouragement. We'd be a voice that lifts up. We'd be a voice that would speak to the heart and not to just the circumstances that are happening. Lord, as we come as a church, we say, let your fire fall, let your wind come blow. God, we're ready for more. We're moving forward into all that you have for us, Lord. And as we put our eyes upon the heavenly vision, God, let us not lose sight of your body that's beside us on the left and the right. Those that have newly come in, that Lord, as you told us as we started this church that we would love God, that we would love people, that we would love life, God. We would love you with all of our heart, with all of our strength. We love our neighbor, our brother and sisters. We love ourselves. And God, that abundant life, the joy of community, of fellowship with you, the joy of knowing you, of walking together would be in our life. The life, abundant life you called us to live. So Father, let that be our portion. Let that continue to be our distinctive. And so we thank you for what you've done this week, Lord. It's amazing. We don't even know. We'll, weeks to come, we'll, we'll begin to unpack the deposit we've received from you. Because we've not looked to a man, a woman. We've looked to you, God. We've come with expectancy of what you're going to do. But Lord, it doesn't end. We don't have to wait for the next conference. You're building a habitation as you spoke this morning. And Lord, we, we want more of you. We're going to get you to walk with you. We're going to walk with you and talk with you in the cool of the day, in the cool of the morning see what you're going to do. So we pray you would seal, seal the work of your spirit, seal the work that's been done in our hearts, Lord, and let it grow, let it bear forth. Freely we receive, let us pour into others that they might receive too. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, and all God's people said, come on, let's give the Lord a shout for all that he's done. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Prophet. Thanks for joining us in experiencing what we have here at CHC. We hope that you take what God has spoken to you today and apply it to all areas of your life. And if you have decided to follow Christ, we welcome you into our family and we congratulate you on your right decision. Please text follow to the number on the screen because we would love to send you something as a free gift from us. We invite you next week to join us and invite your friends and family and your community. And remember, you and I have a bright future with City Harvest Church.